Welcome to the Fabric Podcast, where we explore company culture and how it scales as a company grows. Brought to you by the team at The Receptionist, a bootstrapped Denver-based software company. Each episode of Fabric will set out to uncover unique and uncommon answers to the question, how do companies of any size create a culture and core values that employees actually live out? On this episode of the Fabric Podcast, we're joined by Jessica Marshall, Director of Customer Experience and co-founder here at The Receptionist. We're talking all about happiness, how it fits into our core values of fabric, not just for our customers, but for ourselves as well. Jessica shares all about how we can measure happiness, both short-term and long-term, why some of the tools and scores may not be the best way, but how you do need to rely on something. So this is a great episode if you're not quite sure if your customers are satisfied or if you want to do a better job figuring out if they're happy. But don't forget your own team members as well. We chat about what we're doing to make sure that we're all happy and how we support each other in those goals. So we hope that you enjoy this episode as much as we did. Jess, welcome back to the show. How are you doing today? I'm great, Sarah. How are you? Good. So I'm really excited about our topic today because we are discussing happiness, which I don't know. That's, that's always a fun subject to talk about, right? Oh, it is for me. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think we're two good people who'd be like, yes, let's, let's, yeah, talk. let's, talk, about let's talk about happiness. So, okay. So we've recently shifted the podcast to really be focusing more on fabric, our core values. So where or how does happiness fit into our values and into fabric? Well, I like in every single possible way. Um, I always look at this from like a holistic perspective because it's not just about support or sales, uh, it's engineering and we're and marketing. We're, we're all focused on customer happiness and yeah. our fabric sort of bleeds into all of that. When we're fun, customers can see it. When we're authentic, they can feel it. When we're collaborative and say, you know, I need to ask maybe engineering a question about that. They can see that we're all working together and that we're living those values. So it, it naturally inserts itself into providing happiness for our customers. Yeah. And I I love though that, you know, you sort of say it that way that it's like, it's just part of who we are because if you look at fabric in each of the individual pieces, it may not seem obvious. Like, okay, yeah, if we're having fun, right. Then yeah, we're probably happy. We're being authentic. Okay. Yeah. We're also happy. Right. But I think if you look at those individually, you might not always see it, but we like to make sure that we're enjoying everything we do and that we're happy along the way. And that our customers are happy I'm with happy us along the way. Right. And some of that too is, I mean, I, I love bold as well. It's bold when you're in a support position to have to say, I don't know the answer to that, but yeah. I'm going to go find out for you. That's, that's hard to say. I don't mm-hmm. know, but it's much more respected than a uh, half answer or the, the wrong answer. So it, again, it just naturally bleeds into what we do in service to our customers. Absolutely. And you and I did a previous episode where we talked about happy customers and how they really are the best marketing strategy. And then happy customers, you know, want to spread the word. Although we also talked about how very unhappy customers will spread not so good words, but customer happiness isn't just about marketing. So why, why have we placed so much importance on the happiness of our customers? Why wouldn't you? It, I, I can't tell you how many conferences I've been to and especially in like the startup space. And I see companies who are like moving towards their very first hires and they're talking about hiring a marketing person so that they get the word out or hiring a salesperson so that they get the business in. And so rarely do I hear them talk about hiring a support person to actually support their customers. The sooner you get someone to that, wow, this is amazing moment the the better your product lands with them, the more likely you are to keep them. And a support person does that. Sales, if you're doing it right, and I feel like our teams are, sales can get to that wow moment. But you've still got to keep that customer engaged with your product and engaged with your team. And if they're not engaging with someone who's making them feel like they're being heard or being helped, your, your product isn't going to go anywhere. And there are a few metrics I'll sort of mention a little bit later about the lifetime value of that customer. If they don't get to that wow moment and you don't keep them happy, then you're, you're going to have churn and you're going to lose that customer much sooner than you otherwise would. So I feels like a no brainer to me, right? But well, I'm also in the support space. So I feel yeah. 
like natural. Yeah. But as you said, you know, sales is, it's critical, right? You need your people there to, to sell the product or to get those customers on board. But if then there's no one after the fact, you know, they might be really happy with what they think the product can do or how it's going to help them. And then if there's no one after the sale, they're not going to be happy there. And who do you know, like, you you remember the experience that are both really, really good mm-hmm. and really, really bad. And anything kind of in between gets lost. Yeah. So you obviously don't want to be really, really bad, which is somebody coming to you and saying, help, I don't know how to do this or I have a question. You want to be towards the Zappos and the Amazon side of things. We all know their support. They have made a name for themselves. They're not selling software. They're definitely in a different marketplace but those principles still ring true. You want to give your customers the highest level experience. What that does for your product is set it apart from everyone else. There's no way whoever you are, you're alone in the marketplace. That just doesn't happen. So if you have company in your industry, how are you going to set yourself apart? Yeah, people have options. People have lots and lots of options. And And if they're unhappy with one, they will leave it and go to another. Yeah. So let's get into the nitty gritty. How, how have we tried to determine if our customers are actually happy? Well, NPS scores are kind of the industry standard, right? Everybody knows what an NPS score is. I like both a a short-term and a long-term view and NPS scores are kind of a long-term view. In my opinion, it's also not necessarily about happiness. The NPS score question is, how likely are you to recommend our products or us? Mm -hmm. Well, likely to recommend, yes, there's a piece of happiness in there. But that doesn't necessarily say, I love interacting with your product and I love interacting with your people. We do NPS scores. We run an NPS uh, once a year, as well as I think it's at the three or four month mark that's moved a little bit. But what that gives us is both the long tail view of, a customer's happiness over the lifespan of their account. It might be a one, two, three-year customer, and we're still engaging with them and looking for their feedback. But that short-term three or four-month mark gets us some information about their onboarding experience and their initial implementation of our solution. So that's on both ends. There's a new trend within support to have interactional surveys at the end of our chat, our, our chat system naturally does this for us, or there's a toggle we can turn on that we have that says, how was your interaction today? Mm. So it's a, a case by case basis. That's very short term. And that gives us a pulse on, I think, what, what is happening with our teams and our customers on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So it's much more short term than that four month, you know, two year outside NPS score. Um, there are other things that I've always looked at, which is churn and lifetime value, right? Mm -hmm. If your churn is low, your customers are happy. They're sticking around. They see the value in your product. And if the lifetime, um, span, the lifespan of your accounts is long, they're staying with you, right? Right. For three years. Our NPS scores are much higher than industry average. Uh, our annual is at 68 which is significantly higher than any SaaS uh, company. Our monthly doesn't drop below 50. That fluctuates quite a lot based on how many responses we get in any given 30-day period. Um, Our NPS system sort of blocks it into these 30-day timeframes. Our churn is also right at 1% and has been for the last five years, again, well under uh, industry standard. Yeah. And our customer lifespan is over three years, well over industry standard. So all of that says to me that what we're doing with customer happiness extends throughout the lifespan of that account. Absolutely. So for our listeners who are really going, okay, wow, customer happiness is pretty important. And I, I want to start figuring out how happy my customers are. What have you found really are the, the most effective ways of measuring that happiness or figuring out that happiness? Because you touched on a few things that we do that are working, yeah. but what, what do you feel like are the most effective? I, I, I don't know that I can say that any one is yeah. most effective. I do rely on all of these metrics to give me the holistic view. Yeah. I think if you just look at an annual NPS score, you don't know what's happening right now. Yeah. And if you only look at what's happening right now, 
then you don't know how the lifespan of that account is going to go. So you've got to do both. You've got to right. sort of do all of it. Right. And well, we're talking really quantitatively. What about qualitatively? How are we sort of qualitatively figuring out that our customers are happy? I mean, obviously, like we talk to them and, you know, they, we they do talk us, to them. They, us give us that, great they give are. us feedback. We, um, we ask for reviews as well. That's another good thing I haven't mentioned yet to get um, immediate customer feedback. Mm-hmm. Um, I think maybe the, the, the happiness number is that uh, interactional metric that our chat system gives us, yeah. which is right now, and, and it's not right now, it has maintained a 98% super awesome, very happy score, which uh, in, again, our chat system is a big starry-eyed emoji. So it doesn't ask <laughs> for words or scores. It asks for emojis. Are you really mad? Are you kind of not really satisfied? Are you satisfied? Or really, really starry face satisfied? And we have a 98% starry face satisfied, which means we're answering their questions and doing it in a way that they're happy and had fun with us. Yeah, I love that. And, and that's important to us. We, we want our customers to have those good experiences with us. And certainly not everyone's going to sort of come to the table happy, right? They right. often reach out because they need something. They're, they might be struggling. They're frustrated. They don't understand, uh, you know why something won't work or they think it should do this and it doesn't. So they come to us and they might not be happy, but we want them to be satisfied and happy at the end of that experience. Exactly. And that's only for chat. So that measures like one small portion of our interaction. It's harder to do with a phone call, but that phone call then leads into the MPS scores, right? Right. So having multiple ways of measuring happiness ensures that you're also measuring all of those different encounter types. Absolutely. So yeah, speaking of like encounter types and kind of where people are in the process, let's talk about before people even become our customers, right? Before they even, you know, sign on the dotted line, so to speak. Um, Why, again, this is obvious, but from your perspective, why is it so important to, to start off with happy people before they're even our customers? Why is that part of our sort of mission as well? Well, it's that wow moment, right? You, we start with a free trial. And we want to get them as a using customer. In order to do that, we have this two-week window to show them how awesome our product is and how awesome we are to work with. So we do a lot of personal touches. Our BDR and sales teams, they reach out to customers personally. Personal touches, I feel like, are the, the new normal. We, we moved away from them as a service industry and started mm-hmm. offshoring support and doing scripts on how to answer, you know, common questions. And that feels fake and it's not authentic and we are authentic and we want to make those connections. So if we take that two week period and make every possible human connection to get them to that wow moment, and that that is both, wow, this tool is really cool and it's going to save me a lot of time and energy and pain. And wow, these people are really awesome to work with. Then, then we've got them hooked and right. we have set ourselves apart from our competitors by doing so. Right. And I think we also, you know, our trial is two weeks free, but also no credit card. So you're no. not, you know, we're not one of those services that we're going to no. make it hard for you to cancel or, you know, that we've got your information and you're feeling stressed no. about this. What if I forget to cancel that? You know, we, we don't want those barriers or those concerns from the beginning. No, we want to be human and real yeah. and awesome to work with. All of those barriers are what frustrates the marketplace, Mm -hmm. right? Why would we do that? Why would we, why would we be unnecessarily frustrating? Right. And there's, there's so many, you know, we don't want to point fingers, but there's, there's so many (laughs) businesses who use that model, right? That sure you can try us, but you can try a limited version or you can try the full version, but you have to give us our credit card and then we make it really hard to cancel. And as consumers, we're so both weary and wary of that, you know, it's like, oh, again, we'll forget it. I'm just not right. going to do that. I don't want to give you all that. of my information and, you know, my firstborn and my, my credit kidding. history and all of those things. Like, so I, I love that, you know, we don't do that. That's not who we are. Not who we are. Yeah. So yeah, we really want people to just start off with a great experience and, and learn the product and learn about us. And then ideally they they want to continue with us. Yeah. And I think as part of that personal experience that you mentioned, and I'm glad that you said that. So this quarter, 
my personal rock to the company is to be the turtle police. Oh, I talk, have tell asked us what everyone, that means by that. Uh, I have asked everyone to slow down. Oh, okay. What I've seen is we have a lot of volume. We have a lot of customers. We're busy. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're getting in a hurry to do things. And we're not doing it poorly. Right. But we got into a bit of a hurry. And so I've been, I've been sending little turtle emojis to everybody like slow down, mm. ask another question that, that turtle police is an implorement to ask another question, make sure that you understand what's being asked of you before you give a response. You get into the habit when supporting customers, you get the same questions, right? Yeah. If we're supporting the same product, you get the same questions and you assume, you know, what's being asked and it's being asked in a different way every single time. So if you start to assume you know what's being asked and that's not what's being asked this time, then you've created frustration in your customer mm-hmm. or your trial. Again, that's not who we are. We don't want to create frustration. So slow down, ask a clarifying question and be sure that we know where this customer is coming from to give them the right answer the first time. Yeah, makes so much sense. So we've talked a lot about keeping our customers happy, which is obviously so critical, but t- let's talk about what we're doing to make sure or to keep a focus on the fact that we want our employees to be happy. We want our team members to be happy. What, what are we up to that's a part of that? Well, you can't, you can't spread happiness if you're not happy yourself. Yeah. And, and support and sales and interacting with customers, is, it's hard, especially, again, from a support perspective where someone's coming to you, as you mentioned, from a, I don't want to say a place of frustration, but they can't find it. If they yeah. can't find what they're looking for themselves, then they have to reach out for help. And in order to provide that experience that we want, that's hard. It is hard to be patient and and happy and spread love all day, every day. That's Mm -hmm. really hard. So the Culture Club does a lot of that for us, right? We take really good care of each other in the Culture Club, but we also take really good care of each other as individuals. I love, and this has never been said out loud. It's never been something that was an initiative that went out to the teams. I'm so proud that it's just happened organically. We take really good care of one another. Mm. When I see that one of my colleagues has been on chat for the last four hours, because I've been in meetings, I'm like, okay, you have an hour, go walk your dog, go take a walk, get a cup of tea, meditate, whatever you want to do, listen to music and jam out, go be Zen for an hour. I got this. And we do that for each other. They do it for me. You've been in meetings all day. Go chill. I got this. Mm -hmm. It's really meaningful to me that we all take such good care of each other. And that's what allows us to be so good to our customers. Absolutely. It's yeah. Happiness is is such a critical part of us doing well and the business doing well. And, you know, the, the business doing well is really just a byproduct of us being who we are and staying true to our values, Yeah, which is, which is great. So to wrap up this conversation on happiness, what are your final thoughts or or tips on measuring happiness? Let's go for customers, for our listeners. Like how can they make sure that they're checking in on their customer happiness in a meaningful way? Measurements are hard. And I'm the least numbers person in the entire company. If you ask anybody, they'll tell you. So I've Mm -hmm. given you very few numbers today. Measurements are hard and meaningful numbers are hard. But if you're not doing any of them, you have no idea how you're doing in the marketplace. So do something and and do it immediately. Get an MPS, get a support person on staff, but then start to do some of those measurements. NPS, I think, is a good way to do it. And if it's the only way to do it, my recommendation is both an annual and sort of a rolling so that you're getting different pieces of time in your customer's experience with you. Um, not everybody uses chat, but I think that there are some great tools, not just the one that we use, um, to measure those interactional, um, steps, but at a director or a higher level, churn is probably the primary number and customer lifetime value. So those, those are the numbers you really want to be looking at. If those Mm -hmm. things start to shift or move, something's going awry. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's helpful. And like we said, everyone's business is going to be different and there's different ways to measure it, but, but do something. And then also get that human touch, check in with your customers, be in communication with them, see how they're doing, 
And then do look back at your, your team, because if they're not happy, chances are they they can't spread the happy, aren't happy either. So it's, it's definitely cyclical. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jess. This was as, uh, as I thought it would be fun talking about happiness. One of the uh, topics that you and I both enjoy. So thank you for being on the show and people can watch us on video. Now We, we can wave wave goodbye at them. And if you're just listening, we're waving at you. (laughs) Thanks so much, Jess. Thank you, Sarah. We hope that you got some good insight into happiness, what we've got going on to ensure that our team and our clients are happy and maybe what you would like to do to increase the satisfaction or measure that satisfaction for your own clients and customers. And if you'd like to check out our two week free trial with no credit card required and to see what we do to make our potential customers and then customers happy, check us out at thereceptionist.com.